Hi. Now in this question, we're given that a block B of weight 28 newtons is pulled at a constant speed across a rough horizontal surface by a force of magnitude 14 newtons, inclined at 30 degrees above the horizontal. And in this first part of this question, we've got to show that the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is 0 0.577, correct to three significant figures. Now, I'm only going to do the first part in this video. The second part here, if you're looking at this video on my website, you'll see that there's a link to this second part here. So, as I say, I'll only just do the first part here of this question. So if you haven't done this and want to just pause the video, just give you a moment to do that. Do come back when you're done and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. So the first thing I'd want to do is just to draw a sketch then of the block B on this rough horizontal surface. So just draw our block B. Now I'm going to be treating this block as a particle. So all forces are going to stem from one point. So we'll just make that point there. And the first thing I notice is we've got a weight here of 28 newtons. So that's going to act downwards. And that's unusual because quite often in these kind of questions, we're given the mass. So we've got to be careful here and not write 28 G, just 28 newtons. OK, the mass would be 28 divided by G if ever we needed it. Now, because it's on this horizontal surface, there's going to be a normal contact force. So we'll have that coming up here. We'll call that R Newtons. OK, R Newtons. Now, when told that there's this force of magnitude 14 Newtons inclined at 30 degrees above the horizontal. So what I'll do is I'll mark in a dotted line across here. OK, and then we've got this force of 14 newtons acting at 30 degrees to this dotted line. Now, it's moving to the right here. And so friction has got to oppose motion. So friction is going to be a force to the left here. OK, we'll just mark that in with a solid line like so. And We'll call it FR, OK, the frictional force. Now, because it's moving, that frictional force will have reached its maximum value. It's limiting. And we should be familiar with the fact that this is always equal to the coefficient of friction, mu, multiplied by the normal contact force, which is R. And that will be measured in newtons. Now, these are the only forces acting on B. And I'd like to just put in the fact that it's moving at a constant speed to the right. And so therefore, there'll be no acceleration. OK, so I'll put zero there meters per second per second. And I'll just put a V in here just to show that it is actually moving to the right, but there's no acceleration. So it's moving at a constant speed. Now, in order to work out mu, the coefficient of friction, I notice that in this equation here, we've got R, the normal contact force. So I'm going to need to get R. And to do that, I'm going to resolve vertically. And in other words, I'm going to be using Newton's second law, or force equals mass times acceleration, applied in the vertical sense, with the upward direction as being positive. Now, when I look at this diagram, this 14 newtons is at an angle to this direction here. It's not at 90 degrees. So I need to split this force of 14 newtons into two components. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with splitting forces into components. What we would have is one component in this direction, OK, and one component in the vertical sense up here. And this component here, because it contains the angle, will be 14 cosine 30, or cos 30 degrees for short. 
and this vertical component, because it doesn't contain the angle, will be 14 sine of 30 degrees. Now normally I don't put these components on, I just imagine them, okay? So normally I'll just keep my diagram like this. But what we're doing is replacing the 14 newtons then with these two forces, the components of that 14 newtons. So when it comes to resolving upwards, what we've got essentially is that we've got all of R, okay, acting upwards. And then we've got the component of the 14 newtons acting upwards, which is 14 sine 30. It acts in the positive sense, so that would be plus 14 sine of 30 degrees. We've also got the weight acting downwards, but in the opposite sense, so it's going to be negative, okay, negative 28. As for these two forces, the 14 cos 30 and the frictional force, they're perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. So there's no effect from these two forces. So this is my resultant force in the vertical sense acting on the particle. And this particle, although it's moving to the right, is neither lifting off the plane or moving into the plane. So it's in what we call relative equilibrium. So this resultant force here must equal zero. There's no acceleration, if you like, up or down into the plane. So it's just a question now of rearranging this equation to get R. So therefore R will be equal to, and if I add 28 to both sides and subtract 14 sine 30, degrees, then I get R equals 28 minus 14 sine 30. And if I work this out on my calculator, just check that you're in degrees mode by the way there, you find you should get exactly 21. 21 newtons then for that normal contact force. So all I need to do now to get the coefficient of friction mu is to resolve in a horizontal sense. I'm going to take to the right as my positive direction, purely because that is the direction of motion. So what I've got now is all of 14 cos 30 acts to the right, so that's going to be positive, 14 cos 30 degrees. I've got the frictional force, mu r, acting in the opposite sense, so that's going to be negative, so that'd be mu times r, and r was 21. As for the weight, 28 newtons, the normal contact force R, and the component of the 14 newtons, 14 sine 30 degrees, these forces are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving, so they have no effect. So this is my resultant force on the particle, and it would normally be equal to mass times acceleration, but the acceleration is zero because it's going at a steady speed, so that's just going to come to zero. And I can rearrange this for mu. If I add 21 mu to both sides, I get 21 mu equals 14 cos 30. And then if I divide both sides by 21, I end up with mu equaling 14 cos of 30 degrees divided by the 21. And if I work that out, you end up with 0.57735 and so on, which is looking good because to three significant figures it's going to be 0.577 to 3SF and that's what we had to show. Okay, now as I said earlier, part two of this question is not in this video, it's in another video which you should be able to see the link to if you're looking at this one on my website. Okay, well I hope you've been able to follow what I've been doing. And as I say, normally these components here I wouldn't mark in, I'd just be thinking of them. I would just have my diagram looking like this. 
and be able to see those components and create these equations that I've got here. OK, well, I hope that's been able to give you an idea. That brings us now to the end of this particular part in the question.